Hi Bobcats! In this video, we're going to take a look at the concept of representative particles. Um, this concept will help clarify how to proceed in certain calculations that we will do shortly. Our objectives include um, to identify the representative particle for a compound, to choose the correct term for the representative particle of a substance when talking about it, and then to calculate the number of atoms of an element in a sample from the number of formula units in the sample. The idea behind a representative particle is that it is the smallest piece of a substance that still has the chemical composition of that substance. Different types of substances have different uh, smallest pieces or representative particles. Here are some examples of common representative particles we'll run into. If we're talking about an element, for most elements, the representative particle will be just an individual atom, so we would use the term atom. There are a few elements, known as the Brinkelhoffs, um, that exist as diatomic molecules, so for those elements it would be more appropriate to say a molecule of the element. If we are talking a covalent compound that would be constructed of a nonmetal plus another nonmetal, the correct term for uh, the representative particle would be a molecule. And if we're talking about an ionic compound made of a metal plus a nonmetal, the correct uh, term for the representative particle is the formula unit. The formula unit is the smallest piece of that that maintains the correct relationship or ratio between the cations and the anions. To give you an idea of uh, how we would use this concept of a representative particle, if we're talking about different types of substances, we would use different representative particles. So for instance, if we are talking about one mole of all of these substances, we're going to use different words for it. For instance, one mole of water, which is a molecular or covalent compound, is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. If we're talking about an element like iron, one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of iron. Iron is one of the elements that when we write its symbol, we just write Fe and that's it. If we're talking about one mole of the element oxygen, which is a Brinkelhoff, so it means that we have two atoms of oxygen stuck together to give us a diatomic molecule, then one mole contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of oxygen. Um, then for our last one, we're talking about the compound copper 2 sulfate. That is an ionic compound because it's a metal plus a polyatomic ion. And so the appropriate term is formula units. One mole of copper 2 sulfate contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of copper 2 sulfate. This clicker question asks, what is the best description of a mole of carbon tetrafluoride? Pause the video. When you figure out the answer, start up again. Alrighty, as we answer this, we have to figure out which type of a compound CF4 is. Carbon is a nonmetal. And fluorine is a nonmetal as well. So when we have a nonmetal plus a nonmetal, that's going to be a covalent compound, or the other phrase for that is molecular. So the correct representative particle um, is going to be a molecule, which is answer A. So what is the best description of a mole of calcium fluoride, CaF2? Once again, pause the video and we'll come back in just a moment and look at the answer. All right, so to figure this one out, calcium is a metal and fluoride is a nonmetal. So if we have a nonmetal, I'm sorry, if we have a metal plus a nonmetal, that's going to be ionic. And the correct um, representative particle for an ionic compound is a formula unit. And this is probably about the only time in a class that you could say FU to the instructor, and the instructor is not going to get mad.
So the best answer on this is answer C, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of calcium fluoride. What is the best description of a mole of cesium? Well, cesium is an element and it is not one of the Brinkelhoffs. So for all of the elements except for the Brinkelhoffs, the correct uh, representative particle is an atom. So there's one extra wrinkle I want to throw in on um, the, the concept here of representative particles. Atoms can be representative particles, but they aren't always representative particles. And so we want to look at the case where something like a molecule is a representative particle, and then see if we can figure out how many atoms of an element are present. So if the question is how many atoms of H are in one mole of water? Well, keep in mind that the formula for water Oops, I lost my little pen. There we go. The, the formula for water is H2O. And so there are two hydrogens in every one molecule. And one mole contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So if we have one mole of water, we have twice that number of hydrogen atoms because each each molecule of water has two hydrogens, so each mole of water has twice as many hydrogens. Um, so we have 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is 1.2 times 10 to the 20. Uh, oh, my exponent's wrong there. That should be 1.2 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen. The bottom line is that atoms can be tricky. So hopefully this flowchart helps you navigate that a little bit better. If you're asked to find atoms, ask yourself, is atom the representative particle or the RP for the substance? If the answer is yes, then the number of atoms is the number of representative particles. But if the atom is not the representative particle, in other words, you're dealing with something that has molecules or formula units, then to find the number of atoms of that element, you're going to multiply the subscript on that element in the formula times the number of representative particles. Um, if that all seems a little vague right now, hopefully after we do um, the next couple of sections, it will be a little bit more concrete. Our objectives were to identify the representative particle for a compound, to choose the correct term for the representative particle of a substance, and to calculate the number of atoms of an element in a sample from the number of formula units of that sample.